So today we're going to talk about chromoling, these things which have showed up in living rooms across the nation. A massage tool to decrease discomfort, improve function, uh, flexibility, range of motion, at least temporarily. Of course, if you do it often, then it could help you um, create permanent changes over time. You can use foam rolling before a workout to uh, literally loosen up and be able to move with more ease or use it afterward as a recovery or even as its own session at another time in the week. Let's talk about the muscles that we're going to roll today. The quadricep muscles, quad means four. You have four muscles here, but it's actually three next to each other and then one underneath. So rolling different angles of the thigh will emphasize different muscles. They join up at a common tendon that runs over the kneecap, and we're gonna roll to that point, stop before the knee so that we're not putting a lot of pressure on bones. We'll go front, middle thigh or mid thigh, that's the adductor group. You have a number of adductor muscles. And then on the outside, you have the IT band is a big structure that goes from the lower leg to the hip. It's like a big, um, piece of connective tissue and so it acts kind of like a ligament in terms of just generally stabilizing but it has two muscles that feed into it the TFL which is a small strip like muscle here and the glute max coming from the back so these muscles actively tighten and help to loosen just by relaxing the IT band in order to help control the knee positioning so if I fire these muscles here it can help pull the leg to the side and also it can help this knee from falling in too much if I'm doing a squat or a lunge. If I'm super tight up here, I might have a really irritated IT band from having my knee fall in repeatedly and just from not having um, this area working very well. So rolling up at the top of the hip, the glute max, and for sure the IT band can help out if you have knee discomfort and if you have a hard time controlling leg positioning during different leg exercises. Hamstrings, three of them on the back of the leg, they run at different diagonals as well. It's a little harder to put a lot of pressure on them with a foam roller, but we can try. And you know, if you're tight enough, it'll work anyway. So we're gonna be doing these four different aspects of the thigh. And then we'll work our way down to the calf, in the lower leg, the gastrocnemius, the larger two-headed calf muscle, running this whole length that joins the Achilles tendon here, which then connects to the heel and then a layer deeper toward the bone of the soleus, and the soleus shares the same Achilles tendon running down to the heel. So rolling these guys and working on different aspects, you might find that you're super tight just in one little area on the inside or outside, so uh, you have to explore and find out. And then we'll also get the outside of the lower leg muscles that run down and then um, ultimately cross the ankle joint and connect on the foot and help with stability. Lastly, today we're going to get to the mid and upper back, that's the thoracic spine, or the part of the spine that has the rib cage, and we'll be rolling from the mid back up to here, so just below the neck, and we're trying to access the muscle groups that run along the spine to help with posture and also um, to reduce discomfort there, especially if you have a hard time, say, standing upright or sitting upright that likely means that when you are sitting that you're in a forward folded posture and that it's hard for you to extend your spine. We want to be able to do this so that when you go to stand up, let's say you've been working for a while, when you go to stand up you don't just use the lumbar spine to get vertical without being able to extend the thoracic spine. So being able to have this mobility in the thoracic spine is really important to keep these guys happy and allow you to just stand up. If you haven't done this in a while, it of course feels really uncomfortable, but if you are used to foam rolling, then you'll want to go uh, possibly with a harder roller and also with single leg pressure. So starting with the front of the leg, rolling from above the kneecap, and remember each angle will have a different emphasis, so different muscle fibers will be pulled into a stretch and get this massage. So even though I'm on the front of the thigh, I'm thinking like at least three different angles. And after spending about two minutes there, depending on how sore I am, maybe just one minute, then I'll go out to the outside edge. And so now I'm on that lovely long IT band. Same thing, just above the knee to just below the hip joint. 
And here, one of the quadricep muscles is also just underneath the IT band. And then you can keep traveling out toward the hamstrings, at least the sidemost hamstring. And if you find a super tight and sore spot, you want to just go back and forth slowly there. If it's really bad, you can even just stop and just take a few big breaths. And just push into that spot, willing the muscles to relax. And then after a while, like kneading dough, then you can try to work that in um, to the whole system. It's that the ultimate goal is to get these long, slow passes. Going toward the inner thigh is a little bit trickier and a little less common. So most folks I talk to about this um, seem to have not done it before. So I'm going to turn my leg out. And this is a moderate pressure version because my other leg is still down. To get more pressure, you actually want to um, use the roller the opposite orientation and bend your thigh to the side of the hip and then really press in. And then pressing up on these toes so it's kind of a, a weird plank and really pushing in to this right thigh. So now I've got all of the adductor muscles being rolled which tend to get tight in normal life anyway and certainly if you're doing a lot of squats and lunges and running and things like that. Some people, if they're tight enough, or on the day of the week, um, that you've just done a lot of leg work before, you might be able to get um, the hamstrings as well, but often it's just not enough pressure. Um, but this would be the way to roll the hamstrings with the foam roller, and just go slowly. It's also another one of these unusual kind of planks, so maybe that's good training, or maybe it just sucks and it's really hard to do. <laughs> Those are probably some of the most classic moves you can do a lot of good work on the calf as well. And uh, that would be the, the two big calf muscles, gastrocnemius and soleus, and then the outer edge. These are called the peroneal or fibularis muscles. They also can be really tight and they're easy to access with a roller. So another one of these planks, this one definitely trains the shoulders and abs at the same time. And I'm rolling my legs a little bit side to side as I'm going back and forth until I find a spot. So I just found a huge knot right here. Thank you, calf. So I'm gonna go ahead and just focus on that right one and try to uh, work it until I can integrate it with the rest and get the smooth, long roll. And for more pressure, you can of course do this too. <laughs> so now we're getting more deep tissue. And um, you shouldn't expect your legs to feel symmetrical in terms of tightness and sensitivity. So if you have a spot like I did, you can spend more time there and roll it out. And actually my left feels, feels pretty good. So then I'm gonna to go to the outside edge. So now I have a kind of a side plank. I'm gonna press in, and this is just off the side of the shin bone, the tibia. And I'm feeling pretty good there. I'm often really sore there from doing a lot of balancing work muscles crossing the ankle um, are what allow that. And then I'll actually use a ball instead, so a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball, and use it the same way at the front roller and just um, roll back and forth. Okay. So if you do all that before workout, you'll feel a lot looser in the thighs and calves. And before run as well, you can feel more efficient, like with a bigger range um, available to you, and potentially a bigger, more efficient stride as well. Because they're like these weird planks, you have the shoulders and the um, core muscles are working at different angles and different facings. Kind of full body warm up. It's pretty cool. So last one is the mid to upper back. And um, I'm going to support my head, pick up the hips. If you hear cheering and pot banging in the background, that's because it's 8 o'clock. Go health workers. And because they know we're shooting a video. And I was like, will you guys cheer for us? All right, so with the neighbors cheering, woohoo! Let's get this roll from the mid spine to the upper. And I'm going to go symmetrically for now. And I'm flexing the abs so that I don't end up with a big um, lower back extension. So I'm going to protect the back, flex the abs, and I'm pressing my upper back into the roller. So that's the thoracic spine, and the muscles that run along each side of it 
or what are getting the majority of the work here, those tend to be tight and irritated at most people since most people will sit something like this. So we're working against that and training better posture with upper back extension, thoracic extension. If it's not intense enough, then roll one inch or a half inch to the side, and now you have that muscle bundle. Uh, on this side, it's just to the left of the spine. And I can press in, and the same rules apply. Take it slow if you need to, go back and forth if you need to. So that would be rolling for the thoracic spine. 